Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the increasingly extreme New York Times and their apparent agenda to divide this country along racial lines and apparently just have everybody hate each other. And not just hate each other, but to be blaming all of their ills, everything bad that's happening in their lives, pointing the finger at a racial scapegoat, white people. And as Breitbart describes it, uh, the New York Times announced Thursday that it's releasing a new podcast series titled Nice White Parents about how white parents are preventing black and brown children from succeeding in public schools. Yeah, that's right. They're going to they're going to go they're going to go into the school system now and they're going to tell all the black and brown students and the parents, your problem is those people, those people over there with the white skin. That's the reason you're not succeeding. It's nothing that you're doing. It's not the teachers. You know, it's not the Democrats that are running these school boards and the cities that they're in. It's none of that. No, no, it's white parents. So the reporter of this piece, uh, Hannah Jaffe Walt, who is the author of the or the reporter in this piece, uh, she states in an audio clip that the basis for the project is research that led her back to New York City in 1963, when optimistic white parents insisted that the new school intended originally for black and Hispanic children, oh, it would have been perfect if it was just black and Hispanic children, who lived in the projects, be built near their near neighborhood, meaning the white parents' neighborhood, instead so that their white children and the minority children could attend school together. So apparently... Her basis for this new series, this podcast, is some school in New York City in 1963 where the optimistic liberal parents wanted the school to be built closer to their neighborhood so that all the students could go together. And I guess, uh, so what ends up happening is the school opens and the parents end up not sending their kids to the school for whatever reason. Um, and I'm going to go through their little trailer here, which goes into that. But before we get into this New York Times podcast, I want to take just a quick moment to thank one of our amazing sponsors, Orion Metal Exchange. And they have a free offer for my subscribers that I think could be very valuable to all of you. How far will your US dollar go once we tally up all the debt accumulated in the fight against coronavirus? How will government mandated business shutdowns affect the economy moving forward? My friends, uncertainty is the enemy investors and savers alike need to guard against. Now is the time to take action. Protect yourself, protect your financial future. Did you know that it took nearly eight years for the markets to recover after the 2008 housing bubble crash? Yet during the crash of 2008, gold and silver surged to all time highs. Do you really have eight years to wait for a recovery? Bank of America, Goldman Sachs and Citigroup all see gold soaring, forecasting $2,000 an ounce for gold. Some experts are calling for gold to double in the next year. Orion Metal Exchange is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer. Call today and request a free investment kit below. Mention Drone Tech Politics and get a free one ounce silver coin for qualified retirement account holders. Must be over 40 to qualify. Call 866-915 Five zero five three, and get your free investment guide today. At Orion, you get more precious metals for your money every day. So back to this New York Times podcast, Nice White Parents. And it says a new limited series about building a better school system. And what gets in the way? Wow, what gets in the way? Nice white parents. White people get in the way. It could be great. The school system could be amazing if not for those white people. As Nick Cannon said, these subhuman, genetically inferior white people. And nobody and you know, nobody had a problem with that. It was his anti-Semitic rhetoric that everyone had a problem with, apparently. His anti-white rhetoric, nobody even mentioned it. Nobody cares. So maybe New York Times feels the exact same way. Let's just get into this, hear what they have to say. Nice White Parents is coming July 30th, wherever you get your podcasts. I want to take you back to a time when a group of idealistic people feeling hopeful about the future, about America, threw themselves into the fight for racial integration. It was 1963, and New York City was planning to build a new school right next to a housing project, where the students would be almost entirely Black and Puerto Rican. But these okay. white parents... Real quick, I just... So the premise of this is that the white parents screwed everything up by having the kids come to building the school closer to their neighborhood, but then they didn't even show up. My my question is, first of all, and they don't go into any details here, but my first question would be, how did that school do? Did the black and brown students do well? Uh, 
would they are you saying that they would have done better if the white students would have been there are you saying that the school would have done better had it remained you know in the uh, inner cities or in the projects whatever you want to call it would they would it have been a better school there I, I just I'm not really sure what their point is here and they don't really do a good job of explaining it as you'll see here came in and said no 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 no! don't build it there put it closer to the white neighborhood that way all our kids can go to school together they okay again what's the problem there what uh, she's acting like this this happening somehow uh kept black and brown students from getting a decent education and you know i'm not trying to say that white neighborhoods are better than you know other neighborhoods or anything like that because obviously there are crappy uh white neighborhoods there's nice black neighborhoods clearly but we're talking about New York City here. Uh, would these students have been better served if the school was in their neighborhood? Or is it doing better because it was near a white neighborhood? Uh, they don't address that. And I'll say right now, I tried to figure out what school this is that they're talking about. I could not find it. I did uh, a lot of research. I dug into it. Could not find it. Uh, and it might just be because the search terms that I use get muddled up with lots of other topics, uh, similar topics and subjects. So maybe it would just take a little bit longer for me to find, but I found nothing. Let's continue. They were dogged, these white parents, lobbying the city at meetings, writing letters, saying, don't build it there. It will inevitably be a segregated school. Okay. And so the, the problem here seems to be that these white parents took such an active role. Why weren't the black and brown parents taking an active role? Maybe they were. Maybe those black and brown, brown parents wanted the, the school to also be near the white neighborhood. We don't know because they don't go into it. And like I said, I couldn't find anything. I'm not sure if the whole series is going to be based on this one story. I seriously doubt it. But if this is their starting point, then it's uh, very flawed. And the fact that they're leaving out tons of information leads me to believe that that information would be damaging to the narrative that they're trying to push. And we want our kids to mix with black and Puerto Rican kids from the projects. It's a decade after Brown v. Board of Education, they said. Schools should be integrated. There's an archive filled with letters where the parents wrote things like, we don't want our white children to be part of some, quote, small, white, middle-income clique. Those horrible, horrible people. God. Like, if we could just get rid of those people, everything would be great. We'd be living in a utopia. The Board of Education agreed, changed the entire plan, and located the building where the white parents wanted it. A few years later, the school finally opened. And then, none of them sent their kids there. Okay. Now, I don't know that that's true. Again, I tried to look into this, found nothing. Um, I plan on reaching out to this lady and finding out, but my guess is she won't say anything because it's probably going to come out, I guess, in... Uh, and further uh, future episodes, but I, I just I'm not sure what the premise is here. That especially given today's narrative that uh, on the left where they want segregation, you know, they want these multicultural centers where there's not many white people. They want to be more around, you know, people of their own kind. Uh, apparently, uh, we keep hearing about um, you know universities wanting dorm rooms that are se racially segregated and safe spaces where uh, people of color can go and feel safe and not around all those dirty, nasty white people. You know, they get to go and, and feel safe in their own spaces. So it's just kind of interesting to me that they try to have it both ways. Uh, they want racial segregation on one hand. I mean, uh, look at look at the chop uh, in Seattle where they literally, you know, they literally were telling white people that they were not wanted or needed there. Unless, of course, they wanted to act as human shields, then, then they would be useful. I went through this box of letters, called as many parents as I could, not a single person actually sent their kid to the school. Not one. What happened? I Not one that she could find. And again, we'll find out, but I looked into it, found nothing. So I, I just wonder what she's basing these claims on. I remember thinking very clearly that, okay, I believe in this, but I don't sort of want to sacrifice my children to it. No, as I said, I'm a Quaker. And so my kids went to the Quaker school. But you... <laughs> Okay, so she's, she plays two people here. That's it, two people. One of them, uh, it sounds like they chopped up the audio. Like, that, that doesn't even make sense. I don't, oh, I believe in it, but I don't want to sacrifice my kids to it. That doesn't make sense. So there was clearly something else said in there, and they just chopped it up that way. And the other guy is a Quaker. Yeah, he, ha he thinks that it should be that way, but he also is a Quaker, and so he goes to Quaker schools. I mean, 
This isn't, <laughs> it had nothing to do with race or anything like that. And it's kind of interesting to me that that's the only two that they put out on this. You were a Quaker when you wrote this letter asking for an yeah, integrated I, I believed in it, but. Um, and I think that we say a lot of things that are politically correct without even realizing that we are not telling exactly how we feel. <laughs> and I think that that's the truth about the modern left is they say a lot of things they don't actually believe. They say it because it's virtue signaling. They get pats on the back for it. Uh, they don't want to be labeled a witch or a heretic. And so they say what they're supposed to say. They don't want to <clears throat> get any negative attention focused on them. They'd rather be the ones uh, accusing other people of being witches. But it's interesting to me that because left-wingers are these liberal people that said they felt a certain way and then acted a different way, that all of us, all white people must be that way, right? Because there's you have this small group of people who was that way. And so, obviously, people of that color are all that way. If you ask me my feelings on my child being in a school with uh, mixed race, I'm completely 100% okay with it. I live in a very mixed race neighborhood. I have five or six black neighbors around me so and we all get along fine there we don't go through life uh constantly dwelling on our differences we just are people neighbors living together and living our lives the new york times does not want your mind thinking like that and my guess is that and in, in these circles in these left-wing circles nobody does everybody is race obsessed for years i've been looking for an answer to the question why don't public schools work better? What is getting in the way of giving each child an equal opportunity? And White people. An equal education. White people. But now, I think I've been looking in the wrong places for what's broken in our schools. She knows, it's white people, <laughs> duh. I think you can't understand what's broken if you don't look here at one of the most powerful forces shaping public education. Mm white parents. Ah, oh, of course. From Serial Productions, it's nice white parents. Okay. <laughs> Just a couple things here. The most powerful force, uh, I guess, in education is white people. Really, that's odd because if you look at the demographic trends uh, and you look at this uh, Pew Social Study, it, and it is funny because it's titled whites more likely than blacks to have a college degree. But then you look at this graph and you see Asians soaring above everybody, like soaring. White people down here kind of in the middle and then blacks uh, above Hispanics. Why isn't it blacks have why isn't it blacks more likely than Hispanics to have a college degree or Asians more likely than whites to have college degree? I mean, obviously, because there's an agenda here. They pick the people who aren't doing the best and cast them as the as the enemy here in uh, median income Asian people doing considerably better when you look at the numbers Asians uh, in 2018 earning about 87 grand um, you got white people or I'm sorry that's uh, yeah and then white people coming in at uh, 70 grand so you know that's almost a 20 grand difference I mean it's pretty close they're not that far off and again Hispanic people are doing better better than black people why are Hispanic not being targeted it's also interesting to me that she would make an issue of the fact that white people are so involved in school. I mean, this country is almost 76% white. It is a vast majority white. And so it makes sense that the majority of the people that you're going to have getting involved in schools are going to be white people. And a lot of white people have a very strong work ethic when it comes to school, which is why you have such a high rate of college uh graduation and the same with asian so maybe there's some sort of cultural thing going on here i don't know that is a possibility but it's a possibility that this lady at the new york times won't even consider it's just oh i was so silly i this problem it seems so complex but it was always so easy it's just white people so it's very concerning that these news organizations are adopting what you know, is essentially just blaming racial groups, a racial group, for everyone's problems. It's like, oh, well, these are complex issues that, uh, you know, there's a lot of factors at play here. But no, 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 forget all that. that. That's hard. It's hard to rally people around that. Let's just blame a group of people, white people. And it should concern everybody that these news organizations, these major news organizations, or at least they used to be news, are adopting these ideological uh, platforms. They basically say all whites are racist, even if you don't think so. 
Um, you know, black and brown people aren't racist and they can be. And they will be your superior re-educators. When you're looking to see how you should think, how you should live your life and think as a white person, you need to go to these superior black and brown people who can't be racist. It's not, they have superior, superior genetics and DNA where they can't be racist. So we have to go to them to learn. And don't questionize, scrutinize, or contradict their claims, or you will be punished. You will be ostracized. You will wish you hadn't done that. And you will learn, and other people will learn by watching your example, not to speak up and to, and to just keep silent. To that point about the fact that this is, this is spreading to every news organization out there, and this should be very concerning. Uh, this video that was just put out by the Washington Post the other day, and you'll notice they have comments turned off, and uh, not a lot of people have viewed this, under 600, but uh, the majority of votes are down votes. And uh, you're going to see why right now. There's a moral imperative around talking about racism. People are dying because white people aren't having conversations about racism. People are dying. People are dying because white people won't have a conversation about racism. And I... I'm so tired of hearing this word conversation when they talk about this. There's no conversation. I mean, just listen to this to this girl on here. She's not having any conversation. She's telling you. She's telling you what you think and feel as a white person. She knows. She knows because you've got white skin, so she knows. Even if you don't think you're a racist, you are. She can tell. And this is this is a conversation where they tell you and you shut up. As Americans think more critically about what it means to be anti-racist, <laughs> think more critically. There is a severe lack of critical thinking on these issues. Uh, and, and and she also called herself an anti-racist. Anti-racist. I'm against racism. I'm not an anti-racist. Anti-racists are communists who are using, they're driving wedges in our society specifically so they can take advantage of those divisions to push forward their agenda. That's all that is. Um, you know, the way this girl's talking she talks about white people as, uh, you know, like we're just a hive mind. We're all the same while calling herself an anti-racist. So that tells you about, you know, about how much credibility they have on the topic of being against racism. A lot of people are realizing that journey starts at home by having conversations with your family. And some have started doing that, but it's not exactly an easy conversation to have. Right. And it's not a conversation. It's just you telling somebody. And it, it's not easy because they might disagree. And they might argue with you. And then that's the problem. Oh, we can't have that. So there's not an actual conversation. They just want to be able to tell you and you accept it without questioning it, critically thinking about it, or any of that. How can I approach my parents when it comes to things about racism without feeling like I am annoying them or in a way that gets them excited and wanting to learn more about it. See, learn more about it. There's no conversation happening. She wants to teach. She, she's been indoctrinated. She wants to pass on her indoctrination. And there's no way that she could possibly do it without being annoying. I can tell you that right now because I can't watch another second of her talking. I'll just do a little bit more of this. Before you can have a productive conversation about how someone else is racist, you've got to come to terms with the fact that you might be racist too. <laughs> so we got a real Salem witch trial vibe going on here is that you got to have this conversation where you accuse someone of being racist and in your conversation, they may deny being racist, but you know they are. And guess what? You probably are too yourself. So there's all these witches, um, racist, not witches, I'm sorry. And this person's not a witch. She's, she's just there to point out the witches or at the very least, that you benefit from racism. Problem racism is the problem of white people. So, uh, guys, that's where we are, this uh, weird elven-looking chick. And that, what is with all these people, especially the white ones who are really buying this, they're all just weird-looking people. I don't know what it is. Maybe they've just been picked on all their life, and so they just, and most of the people that picked on them were white, and so they just hate white people. I, you know, I don't know, but racism was not created by white people okay racism is a human condition that's been around since the beginning of humanity it it, it comes really as a product of evolution and so all people have it and so or uh, let me rephrase that all people don't necessarily have it but all human beings are capable of it um and but these people want you to believe that no it's just this one group of people and based on their skin color they're the bad ones i'm sorry guys that's racist 
Look at the definition. Attri attributing a trait or ability to people and broadly generalizing the entire group based on the skin color is literally racism. So look, this kind of rhetoric and pandering can only end badly. Teaching whole generations of kids not to critically think and to just blame everything on a racial scapegoat cannot end well. It's going to tear this country apart. And not only will it do that, but it will ensure, it will ensure that black and brown people continue to underperform. They'll continue being a victim class for the Democrat party. And when other left-wing uh, political party arises, they will always be uh, just uh, reliant votes for the Democrat party and these other parties. They'll keep them in their position so that they're always, they always need them in power to get what they need. And that's what this is all about. I mean, just look at the Smithsonian and that document that they put out about white supremacy, what white supremacy is. All the things they listed in that document were things that typically lead people to a successful life. And so you're left wondering if the people that are currently driving uh, this supposed anti-racist movement, if their actual objective is not just to keep these people right where they're at, because that's what is required to bring about this you know, Marxist uprising, this red revolution. That's all I have for this episode today, folks. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. It's one of the best ways you can support this channel. Another great way is to support this channel's sponsors. As long as you all are supporting them, they will continue to support this channel. And as always, if you want to donate, you can do so on one of the platforms that's listed in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching, everybody. Keep coming back.